ओके इट्स एक्सेसिबल राइट सो आर यू एबल टू व्यू द वीडियोस एंड एवरीथिंग या एनिमेशन वीडियो नोट्स एंड वीडियो रिकॉर्डिंग्स एंड पीपीडीज यस यस so please uh, save this drive don't worry again i will uh, circulate this at the end of the class so uh, so that those who missed in the middle they can have this drive link at the end and also in the coming classes also i will keep circulating like till the end so that uh, anybody new also who is coming they can access this and they can get to learn uh yes yes saujit no no actually i am telling yes oh okay okay fine fine so uh i i'll keep updating so just save this drive link uh, in this drive link i will keep updating problems and uh, mm, solutions to those problems uh, which were unable to discuss in the class because for class time is very short so i'm unable to uh, like mm, properly discuss so uh today's class i have shortened it uh, as much as possible so that you know we can discuss in detail and we can go slow um i i hope we will have sufficient time to finish our entire portion um okay so once again i will circulate this link at the end of the uh, class so that those who missed they can access uh now we will go to the class so please tell me if my screen is visible Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's okay. So, um, good evening, everyone. Let us go for the class. Uh, just a minute before we start. Uh, I'll just check. Okay, it's under recording, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um. So, can someone tell me what we discussed in the previous class? Any ideas? i was watching things crystal structure sir okay uh, crystal structures actually we discussed uh, in the class before that um uh, anything else other than crystal structures defects and the yes uh, we discussed actually about uh, uh line defects line and uh, point defects So, under line and point defects, do you remember any points? What did we discuss? Yes, sir. Vacancy. Exactly. So, vacancy comes under which one of these two? Line or point? Point defects. Exactly. It comes under point defects. Anything else that comes under point defects? Intersectional subs. Uh, yes we have interstitial defects they are called interstitial defects okay so do you know the difference between these two vacancy and uh, interstitial defects sir uh, yes there is one one uh, crystal is missing then that might be vacancy defects mm. Uh, actually not one crystal rather one atom so we'll take one a bunch of atoms so some bunch of anions and cations so uh, let's say this uh, shader ones are uh, the shader ones are uh, we'll take it as anions okay and then on non shaded are cations so um it it i'll i'll draw on Uh, okay mm we'll keep it like this so if uh, one anion or cation or both are missing okay then we get vacancy right so in case if a cation and anion both are missing what do you call it what Sort of defect you call it? 
cation plus anion vacancy. What defect do you call this? Anyone? Yes, sir. From color vacancy, sir. Uh, yes, yes. So we call this uh, short key defect. Right? So in case there are interstitial defects. So what is interstitial? Sir, like overlapping. Uh, this, this is a kind of an overlapping with atom. Uh, to be exact, um, what can we say is uh, the atom will occupy some interstitial position. Okay? Interstitial, that is uh, uh, not part of the crystal lattice. So if, if it occupies this particular interstitial position, then it is called a interstitial defect. Okay, I'll just write it in short form, INT, interstitial defect. And uh, uh, the, this sort of defect that we get over here, right? We call this, what name do we call? Like short key defect with this as a name. What name is it? A anyone? Okay, um, so this is called a Frenkel defect, right? So, uh, so these are some of the point defects that we saw. Anyone remember what are the line defects that we saw last week? Dislocation, sir. Ah, exactly. I mean, in general, these line, uh, uh, the line defects are called dislocations, but uh, they had two types. Does anyone remember what are they? Is yeah, dislocation and uh, skew or screw skew or screw dislocations yes, skew. exactly very good very good so uh, we saw all of this uh, other than this we saw some other things uh, does anyone remember that okay so what we saw was we also saw about various densities okay uh, density such as uh, theoretical density then we saw planar density and also we saw linear density sorry something is not right just a sec Linear density. So, does anyone remember the formula for this? Theoretical density. Okay, uh, so it is the number of atoms times atomic weight divided by the volume of the unit cell times the Avogadro number. So this is theoretical density. For planar, do you remember? It's quite simple. Yes, sir. Number of atoms in 2D unit cell by exactly. area of atoms in 2D unit cell. Exactly. Number of atoms in 2D unit cell divided by area of the unit cell actually. Uh, not uh, the atoms, but rather the area of the unit cell. Um, instead of uh, unit cell, what we can say is it is area of the plane, whichever plane we are taking, no? So it is the area of that particular plane. Similarly, for linear density also, it is number of atoms in the 
line right and then the uh, what else will come here unit length of direction vectors exactly unit length of direction vector excellent so uh, this is what we covered in the previous class uh, other than this we have some more things but we will have a look so okay uh, this is a bit disturbing i will uh, erase this okay edit yeah okay so we saw some hcp volume based problem right so uh, how to uh, find the volume of uh, a particular uh, hcp uh, crystal um using the formula right we saw that then we saw about perovskites um so i hope you guys uh, had taken the screenshot i mean if not i've also given the ppt so you can go through that um also uh, we saw about yeah the, the theoretical density alone i mentioned so other than this we also saw the planar and linear we will see the planar again because we got stuck up in a problem so i figured that out and uh, we can look at that problem today uh, linear it was quite easy we were able to solve it and uh, miller indices and notations that also we saw so we saw uh, what were the intercepts what were the planes and uh, what are the directions so anyone remember like the different notations for this so if intercept means how will it be any idea okay so intercept means uh, the question will be like uh, say infinity comma infinity comma 1 so this will be the intercepts given or uh, let's say it is like um, 1 comma infinity comma 2 so something like this so this will be your intercept so you will have comma as well as the uh, uh, brackets okay uh, parentheses we call this parentheses okay um then we have planes so how do you represent these planes any idea without comma sir in a bracket exactly so without comma except uh, what we will do is we will take the reciprocal of these things so you know if we represent this as a plane it will be like 0 comma 0 comma 1 and if we re represent this as a plane it will be sorry sorry what am i saying <laughs> 0 0 1 and this will be 1 0 1 by 2 you have to take reciprocal sorry sorry in this case sorry this this will be 1 by 2 here in that case this will be uh 2 and 1 yeah this is this is how it it, it is okay this is the representation and um uh directions how will the directions look like any idea square bracket sir it's exactly. a comma it's uh, the same thing over here and uh, just a square bracket so these are the crystallographic direction representations other than this we saw something known as family of planes so for family of planes it will be like open and close bracket so if we take a uh, family of plane means it will enclose all possible planes all possible similar okay when i when i put something like this it means similar okay similar planes okay so next we saw uh, yeah today we will see about uh, sorry sorry we saw about linear density then we also saw about limiting radius uh, ratios and structures so this is more or less uh, you know something that you guys should memorize the table uh, you should kind of have it in mind so that it will be easier for your gate exam then again yeah we already saw this defects right so the point defect i have a doubt yes in previous slide uh, the previous one no? okay uh, yes sir. yes sir. reciprocal of 1 is 1 no? then you have written 2 okay okay uh, so what we should do over here is um we should first take reciprocal uh so these are the intercepts that are given okay 
then after that what we should do is take reciprocal reciprocal of this is 1 by 1 comma 1 by infinity comma 2 by 1 right we did in that case yeah. uh, Oh yes, yes, yes. This becomes uh, two. But actually, when you what I was mentioning was when you draw it right, and when you draw the intercepts, uh, it will be like x. Say this is x direction, right? X will be one. Then uh, sorry, sorry. This is this is y actually. This is x. So x will be one and uh, y will be infinity and z is supposed to be okay this is z uh, half okay so this will look something like this uh, by intercept but if we are converting that to miller indices uh, you know this is intercept so when we convert to in miller indices yeah you are right actually it's one then 0, then 2 only. No, I'm sorry, not 2, 0, 1. I, I confuse this with intercept. So it's 1, 0, 2 only, correct. So um, this is your 1, 0, 2 uh, plane. In terms of Miller indices, we did it. Miller indices, right? This is intercept. Mm, so x, y, z. This is z, then y, then x. In x, we have 1. Okay. Sorry. Uh, here, the scale we have to see. Here, we are consider maximum as 2. Okay. So, this will be 1, this will be 2, this will be 1, max will be 2. This will be 1, sorry, this will be 2. Right. So x is 1, then z is 2 over here, and here also it will be like this. This is your Miller indices representation, right? You, you are right, it's actually 1, 0, 2 only. So it's, it's clear, right? Yes, it's clear. Yeah. The only thing is we have to change the scale. Since this is 2, we have to take uh, z direction as 2. Okay. And this will be half. 1. Half means what? Uh, half of 2 is 1 only. Na? So that's what. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Any doubts? No, sir. No. Okay. okay. Yeah. So we'll, we'll go to the next one. Um, so now we will go to uh, today's topics. So today we will see regarding somebody had a doubt regarding this, right? Um, why FCC is, uh, uh, you know, ABC, ABC arrangement and why uh, HCP is AB, AB sequential arrangement. The thing is, it's a little hard to describe uh, through pen and paper. So I have downloaded a video which uh, we will view after uh, in the coming slides. I think that will be uh, a bit clearer for you guys. So we'll first do that. We will uh, see this stacking arrangements uh, like how, why uh, FCC is ABC, ABC and why HCP is AB, AB. Then we will go for that uh, planar density based problem which we couldn't solve last class, which uh, there was a confusion. Then um, we will go for dislocation motion, slip systems. Then we will see the slip system in single crystal and polycrystals. Then we will see the surface defect alone. This volume defect we will not see because it's not that useful when it comes to gate exam. Okay, so first, uh, please watch this video. It's regarding the stacking arrangement of FCC. Face centered cubic crystal lattice. Uh, are you guys A, B, C, A, B, C arrangement. Audio? Sorry. Yes, yes sir. sir. You guys can hear the audio, right? Yes, sir. Okay, okay, very good. Okay, observe carefully. Sorry, what's this? close packs okay. 
face-centered cubic crystal lattice, ABC ABC arrangement. Quite a tongue twister, isn't it? But face-centered cubic FCC lattice is nothing very complicated. It is simply a way of stacking spheres in the densest and the most efficient manner in three dimensions. It is the grocer's method of neatly piling up oranges and apples that you end up admiring very often. And also the most efficient way of piling up cannonballs in a battlefield. But have you ever wondered who could have come out with this brilliant idea first? It was Sir Thomas Harriot, a renowned mathematician who was the first one to stack these cannonballs in this intelligent way as early as the 16th century and who predicted that atoms in crystalline solids were also arranged in the same efficient manner. Let us try to build the FCC lattice of silver, starting from a single silver atom. Arrange many such atoms in a single row. Now, Make the next row of atoms such that they fit into the depressions of the first row. Go on making the subsequent third and fourth rows of atoms in a similar staggered manner. This layer of spheres is designated as layer A. Each sphere in this layer is in contact with six other spheres. If we join the centers of these six spheres, a hexagon is formed. Thus, this arrangement is called the hexagonal closed packing in two dimensions. This arrangement of atoms results in some empty spaces or voids, which are triangular in shape. Let us label these voids, pointing downwards, as X, and the ones pointing upwards as Y. Now, place the second layer of atoms on layer A, such that the atoms in this layer occupy the X voids. Let us call this layer as B. For every three spheres of layer A, there is a corresponding sphere of layer B, placed above these three spheres. This forms a tetrahedron, and this void is thus called a tetrahedral void. Layer B also has X voids and Y voids. Notice that the Y voids of layer A coincide with the X voids of layer B. Let us consider a group of atoms surrounding the X voids of layer B and those surrounding the Y voids of layer A. You can visualize two triangles, one having an apex pointing upwards and the other pointing downwards. The void so formed has an octahedral shape. Such a void, surrounded by six spheres, is called an octahedral void. Now, place a third layer of spheres to cover the X voids of layer B. This third layer of spheres is designated as C. Label the voids X and Y of layer C, and bring the fourth layer to cover the X voids of C. This fourth layer coincides with the first layer, and we again call it layer A. If you continue stacking layers one above the other in a similar manner, an ABC-ABC lattice is formed. If we take out a unit cell from this lattice, it would look something like this. Hence, the ABC-ABC arrangement is also called the FCC crystal lattice. The packing efficiency, that is, the ratio of the occupied space to the available space in this arrangement, is found to be 74%. As this is far greater than in the AAA arrangement, this arrangement is obviously more efficient. To summarize, we have learned close by. So uh, you guys got uh, the video right. So I think that's pretty much it. Uh, was it clear? Yes.
yeah as to why we are having okay i'll just show you the hcp also so it will become clearer don't worry these videos are already there in the drive link that i provided at the beginning and for those who joined new please wait till the end i will uh, provide the drive link again so that you can also go there and you can access these videos and uh, other resources also okay we'll go for hcp now close pack structure in this module you will learn how the constituent particles of solids are packed to form a hexagonal close pack structure close packing in one dimension let us begin our study by considering the constituent particles of solids as hard spheres in the close packing in one dimension the particles are arranged in a row touching one another in this arrangement each particle is in contact with two adjacent particles hexagonal close packing in two dimensions in the hexagonal close packing in two dimensions one row of close packed particles is placed above the other in such a way that the particles of the second row fit into the depressions of the first row similarly a third row is placed above the second one such that its particles fit into the depressions of the second row and so on this forms a close pack layer of particles in which the particles of the first row are aligned with that of the third row and the particles of the second row are aligned with that of the fourth row in such a layer each particle has six immediate neighbors if the centers of the six immediate neighbors of a particle are joined a regular hexagon is formed therefore this kind of packing in two dimensions is called hexagonal close packing in the hexagonal close packing very less empty spaces left the empty spaces left are triangular and are called voids hexagonal close packing in three dimensions in the hexagonal close packing in three dimensions one hexagonal close pack layer is placed over the other in a manner that the particles of the second layer cover the depressions present in the first layer as a result the particles of the first and second layers are aligned differently now at some places the particles of the second layer cover the triangular voids of the first layer at such places a new type of void is formed this void is surrounded by four particles and is called a tetrahedral void alternatively at other places the triangular voids of the first layer coincide with that of the second layer at such places a new type of void is formed this void is surrounded by six particles and is called an octahedral void the third layer is then placed over the second layer covering its tetrahedral voids the particles of the third layer in this case are exactly aligned with that of the first layer so if the first layer is a type and the second layer is b type the third layer will again be a type this pattern repeats in the subsequent layers and is called a b a b packing pattern in three dimensions the structure resulting from this packing pattern is called a hexagonal close pack structure coordination number in a hexagonal close pack structure in a hexagonal close pack structure each particle remains in contact with 12 particles This number that determines the number of particles in close proximity is called coordination number. So, in a hexagonal close pack structure, the coordination number is 12. In this module you have learned in the close packing in one dimension, the particles Okay, so I guess uh, you guys got to know uh 
know the stacking arrangement of HCP, right? And the differences between FCC and HCP, right? Uh, it, it was clear, no? So don't worry, it is available in that uh, drive. So you can watch it again. So if anyone has any doubts also, you can ask, uh, no problem. So I think the video was pretty clear, so I guess we will move on. Yeah. So last class we saw this. So the planar density of uh, uh, 100 plane iron. Okay. So this is a pretty straightforward problem. We got the answer directly. And um, uh, does anybody have any doubts in this particular problem? Uh, yes? No, sir. Okay, okay. Now let's go to the other one. So this is where the problem came actually last time. So, yeah. Now we have the FCC unit cell with 110 plane. Right? So, uh, sorry, sorry. This is not LD. This is... Uh, what's happening? Oh, this is previous one now. Okay, mm, just ignore this. It is actually, I'll write it here, planar density. Planar density is number of atoms divided by area of the plane actually. So, we know the number of atoms here are how many? Two, right? So, in this particular plane, okay, that's what we have taken over here, okay, just this, this part, this arrangement, okay, that's what we have taken over here. The number of atoms is, there are four atoms in each corner, which is shared by four other 2D unit cells, plus there are two atoms shared at the center by two other unit cells. So 2 into 1 by 2. Finally, there is the area of the plane. So area of the plane. So here what do we have? Last time we had a square. So it was pretty easy. So this time we have something known as a rectangle. So we were right in taking this as a into b. However, this b this is where the problem came. So, anyone knows uh, what this B is? 2A, sir. Mm -hmm. 2A. 2A. So, how can we say this is 2A? Any, uh, any justification? So, this sir, actually, hey, yes, yes. Radius uh, in comparison of uh, radius because the last uh, last atom is uh, uh, assuming as half. So uh, what I would suggest is okay, that's a good approach. But what I would highly suggest is uh, let us take uh, the parameter that we know. So the parameter that we know over here is radius. Okay. We can solve by that way also, but uh, I think this would be more uh, justifiable. So if we take radius now, this is 1R, this is 2R, and this is another one more R. So totally, B is equal to 4R. Can we take that? Yes. Okay. So what we will do is A into 4R, right? Oh, sorry. And um, does anyone remember what is the value of A for uh, FCC? So uh, try to keep this in mind. Root 2 A is equal to 4 R. Uh, we already saw, right? 
So we'll have uh, the face centered atoms. Okay, and this will be A and this will be another A. Okay, so this is face centered. And uh, say let's keep this as A, B, and C. We have to find A, C square. So this is a face, okay, not a body centered, by the way. Okay, this is just a face, not a body centered. So I'm sorry, this looks like a body centered asset. Please, this is FCC only, not BCC. We are just trying to find a, uh, this face centered atoms. Okay, so AC square. Okay, this is A over here. This is C over here. Is equal to AB square plus BC square. We already know AB value, which is A. Plus we already know BC value, which is another A. Okay, A square, A square. Therefore, get rid of this. Mm. Sorry. Uh, therefore, AC square is equal to 2 into A square, right? And AC is equal to root 2 A. So we got this, right? So uh, again, this root 2 A is equal to how much, how many radius? Here, one radius will be there. Here, two radius and then here one more radius so r plus 2r plus r which is equal to 4r so we got this root 2 a is equal to 4r right from this we get our a in terms of radius 4 by root 2 r right so we put here 4 by root 2 r into 4 r okay so we solve this finally we get our planar density something like 1 by 4 root 2 r square okay this is just a rough answer okay i mean we didn't get the r value so i mean uh, we don't have r value here so this will be our answer so many atoms per meter square so you guys got this Yes. A any doubts? No, no. Okay. So, likewise, let's go to the next problem. I had asked you guys to solve this. So, did anyone uh, try and get the solution? Uh, any answer is fine. I mean, if even if you guys would have tried wrong also, it's absolutely okay. So, did anyone try? Trying, sir. Okay, okay. So, okay. Uh, the thing is, actually, we are running out of time. So, I will just solve this problem. Meanwhile, you guys can try and if anyone has solved, you can just tell me the answer and, uh, uh, you know, we can try to uh, just uh, compare it, okay? So, uh, then another thing before we start we have to see one one thing here uh, here this is BCC right and two problems ago this is also BCC why is it that here we have a, a structure like this a rectangle whereas here we have a perfect square what is the difference any anyone can give the suggestion as to why we have such a big difference Sir, bonding distance due to bonding distance, uh, atomic bonding distance. Bonding distance, okay. Bonding distance, you are close, but can you give a better answer? It would be good. Uh, better means, uh, you know, something related to uh, Miller indices. Okay, I think I told the answer itself, but just tell me. Related to Miller indices, how can we justify? Sir, interstitial, uh, due to interstitial, different, sir. 
Uh, uh, no, okay, uh, no need to go all the way to inter interstitial. Just uh, okay, no problem. A good try. Uh, you are close actually. You are very close. Uh, so I'll I'll tell. See here, what we are doing is in this particular BCC structure. Though it is BCC, we are only taking one double zero plane, right? One double zero plane is. Let's draw the Miller indices over here. Say this is x, this is y, and this is z. Sorry, sorry. This is x. This is y. Anything is fine. Uh, I mean, we usually take this as x, right? So one zero zero is x, y, z, and uh, this is supposed to be our plane. Okay. So be it one zero 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 one zero or zero zero one or uh, one bar zero zero, any of this, right? In any case you will only be getting a square the uh, body centered cubic uh, that uh, what can i say mm, atom that won't interfere in these uh, external planes right but when we cover inside okay when we cover across that is when the body centered uh, plane will have an effect Okay, so here it didn't have an effect at all, right? Because we are only taking the external planes, right? So that is why we took just a perfect square over here. Whereas in a, in this case, you see that we are taking it across the whole, uh, you know, unit cell, and since uh, we are taking it across, it is covering the body centered atom also. That is why we are getting a structure like this. So, did you guys uh, understand what I tried to say? That's right. Understood, right? So, this will be your one zero zero no okay, uh, zero one zero plane. Uh, we will assume this as y. So, this will be zero one zero plane, and uh, this will be your. I'll keep, put a straight line like this. Okay, so this will be your one zero zero plane. Okay, so. Now you guys understood as to why we took uh, this particular uh, uh, image, this particular diagram for solving the problem. Next, now we got it like this. Let's go for the formula. Planar density is equal to number of atoms divided by the area of the plane. Area of the plane. So. Uh, number of atoms here, uh, can anyone tell me how many? Four, sir. Uh, not four, it's actually two. Four, uh, yes? Two, sir. Six into one by two plus one, sir. Six? Into one by six. No, no, no. See, actually, here we are only having four, right? We are only taking this plane, this particular plane. So, if we are taking this plane alone, we'll get this uh, diagram like this, right? And what are we doing here? We are taking for how many atoms are here? Totally, we have four outer atoms, right? So, yes, 4 into 1 by 4. Okay, you got this right. But here we have one central atom. So, yes, one yes, full yes, central yes. atom. So, 4 into 1 by 4. This gets cancelled. We get 2. Right? Uh, you got this right? Number of atoms. Yes, sir. Okay. Next, we have the area of the plane. Right? Root A square. Root to a square, exactly. <laughs> You're perfect. So, who told this? <laughs> Avinash, right? Perfect, perfect. So, this is the answer root to a square. How root to a square means? Um, so, this is a, right? The outer uh, uh, side. Okay. All sides are a. So, we took uh, just one side. A yes. into this thing. 
this uh, we do not know it's doubtful only so we know only one side a right what is this side we don't know how to find this very simple we already solved uh, our previous uh, equation right um for body centered cubic so we have 1 2 3 okay let's put it like this and then this is our fourth one and then we have our body center and then we will have our final uh, atom over here okay so sorry it doesn't look much like a cube <laughs> looks like something else so this is another so can you guys see some sort of a body centered cubic over here i'm so sorry that it's so distorted so okay from this what is happening is um mm, we initially we know that this is a and this is also a right the bottom okay this is a this is also a so from this to these two we can find out what this is right this particular uh, diagonal this is d dash e dash right it is equal to uh, let's call this f dash okay d dash f dash plus f dash e dash d dash f dash is a plus sorry 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 pythagoras is square everything has to be square so d dash e dash sorry square is a square plus a square therefore d dash e dash square is 2a square and d dash e dash is root 2a right so now that i have found this sorry uh, this uh, diagonal uh, root 2a the same thing applies here right because this is a rectangle so rectangle means the sides are opposite sides are equal right so this unknown length is root 2a therefore we get a root 2a over here and 2 by root 2a square so you guys got uh, i mean uh, you have a clear idea how this came right any doubts no doubt sir okay so what we do is instead of a we now substitute uh, for bcc what is the relation so i'll just write here root 3a is equal to 4r am i right and a is equal to 4 by root 3 into r okay now we just take this and substitute over there it is uh, what can i say little tedious 2 by root 2 4 by root 3 into r whole square if we solve this right just a minute finally we get our answer as something like 3 by 8 root 2 uh sorry r square okay so many atoms per meter square so am i correct yes sir okay so this is how uh, how we kind of get the bcc for the unit cell with 100 plane so likewise you guys can solve similar problems right so any doubts with these sort of problems in uh, planar density no okay so don't worry uh, i'll give more problems in the notes along with solution so it will be easier for you guys to follow um so next we can okay we thought we could uh, i thought we could finish slip also okay i'll just give an introduction we will take till 75 75 okay or you guys want to leave by 7 itself for the next class yes sir 7 7 will be better huh? okay fine no problem um let's cover as much as possible so slip so slip is a process by which the dislocation moves and deforms in a material okay 
then like uh, the thing is say for example uh, you may ask you may ask a doubt why on earth are we trying to find all these things right why all these uh, density say for example uh, theoretical density uh, it has several several applications right theoretical density we can use to find uh, uh, we can find the mass theoretical mass of the material okay a full material whole bulk material not atomic using atomic we can find the uh, mass of the bulk material we can also find uh, what is its uh, tensile strength uh, what are its uh, stress strain characteristics all these things we can roughly calculate or i mean we can calculate if we know the theoretical density but what about uh, this planar and linear density what is the whole point of them any idea anyone so is it like partial density like for a section wise density exactly exactly section wise density but um, application uh, where will it be used any idea so uh to get result uh, uh, actually uh, to determine the failure analysis or uh, for for access problems that... perfect perfect uh, the one small detail i would like to add is failure along a particular plane or a particular direction right even like miller indices from miller indices we go for oh god sorry uh okay I'll, i'll write it somewhere else here is not a good place okay i'll write it here okay Sorry. so first there is miller indices from miller indices we go for planar and linear densities once we find the planar and linear densities then we determine slip slip means at which plane or direction the sorry which plane or direction the material will fail which particular direction okay and which particular plane and do you guys know at which particular direction or plane the material will fail any ideas so on the basis of uh, dislocation sir uh not exactly but uh, yeah on the basis that's true but a material fails in the direction or plane so this is plane containing maximum density of atoms so if a particular plane or a particular direction has the maximum density of atoms right that is where the failure is most probably likely to occur so that is why we are uh, calculating this uh, uh, linear uh, density and planar density linear density for determining which direction the material will fail and planar density to determine which plane of the material will result in failure so you got the point guys uh, is it clear yes sir yes so no doubts right yes okay so with this we will end today's session 
next we will go for uh, uh, slip in the coming class slips uh, crit critical resolve shear stress and then um, the surface defects we will go and then we will go for alloys and phase diagrams in the uh, coming class so thank you so much you guys for uh, staying till the very end and also what i will do is for all the newcomers who joined um i will now share the link so please just wait for 5 minutes um okay so whoever join new i will uh share a link so you guys receive the link yes sir. yes sir yeah so this contains all the recordings of the previous classes um as well as uh, like even this recording of today's class will be uploaded in this link and also other than this uh, you will have other uh, resource materials also like uh, uh, what do you call that uh, uh, notes and uh, also uh, ppts so they will also be available you can make use of them and you can uh, study them for your uh, gate exam so thank you guys for attending today's class and um, wish you all merry christmas and uh, hope to meet you guys next week so thank, thank you so much you. Thank, thank you guys sir. thank you guys any doubts please feel free to ask yes, me in the next class yeah okay, thank you thank you thank you so much guys thank you thank you sir merry christmas to you too thank you thank you priyanka thank you for wishes hello sir ah yes yes srinivas Sir, this link contains notes also. Sir, you have notes. Ah, uh, yeah. Actually, notes I am still preparing. But then there will be one one uh, word document which contains the lecture videos that I am following for uh, this particular course. So it will be very useful for you. You can go through them. In the same same drive link, I will upload the uh, graphical notes also. So that will take some more time. Um, but uh, my PPTs are all will be there. PPT will be there. Recording everything will be there. So. it will be useful for you you can uh, go through it uh, any other doubts also you can reach out to me in the subsequent classes in any future classes the upload uh, the, you upload in notes uh, it will update it, sir ah yeah yeah it will update same it's same, same link. Link. please uh, uh, okay. save this link so uh, any updates it will reflect here okay thank you so much sir no, bye sir thank you thank you bye bye nice thank you thank you ajit yeah thank you